من اینجا ریشه در خاکم من اینجا عاشق این خاک اگر آلوده یا پاکم من اینجا تا نفس باقیش میمانم من اینجا باز در این دشت خشک تشنه میرانم من اینجا روزی آخر از دل این خاک با دست توهی گل بر میفشان من اینجا روزی آخر از ستیق کو چون خوشی سرود فت میخوانم و میدانم پس از استقرار انقلاب اسلام Following the formation of Iran's Islamic Revolution in 1979 Bahais were among the first groups to become the subject of harassment and persecution by the government In parallel with the exclusion of Bahais from any mention in the constitution and the denial of both their citizens and human rights the Iranian media encouraged this behavior by publishing a constant flow of reports on the arrest torture and execution of prominent Baha'is, including members of the Baha'i institutions. The combined efforts sought to destroy or confiscate Baha'i religious, historic and cultural sites, Baha'i cemeteries and Baha'i-owned hospitals and clinics, along with the expulsion of Baha'i teachers, professors and students from academic institutions, aimed to economically suffocate the Baha'i community. Initial attempts to paralyze the lives of the Baha'is began by seizing the companies that belonged to the Baha'i community or those that were owned by individual Baha'is. This was followed by the confiscation of properties belonging to Baha'is who had already been executed. We do not know the whereabouts of the confiscated assets and the names of those who benefited financially from their appropriation. But what we do know is that the goal was to marginalize the Baha'i community in an attempt to make it helpless and paralyzed. تا نهایتا به جامعه درمانده و فلج شده تبدیل شود. اخراج بهایان از مشاور From the very beginning of the revolution, Islamic purging committees were installed in every office and ministry in the country. Among their main activities was to expel Baha'is from government positions. Baha'i employees who refused to convert to Islam were fired from work and their retirement benefits were entirely dissolved. The appointment of Muhammad Ali Rajai as the Minister of Education and later as Prime Minister served to significantly increase the efforts to dismiss Baha'is from academic institutions. At the start of 1980, Iranian newspapers published reports on the collective expulsion of Baha'i elementary and high school teachers. As a result, the universities, government offices, museums, and even private companies were gradually forced to follow suit. In the initial months following the victory of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Sadoui, hostile towards the Baha'is of Iran, ordered the expulsion of all Baha'is from their positions during a Friday morning sermon. Following his comments, groups of misguided people in various towns invaded the homes of Baha'is ransacked their belongings, beat them, and set their properties on fire, according to a statement published in the Kahan newspaper on 7 December 1981. Expulsion of all Baha'is from government positions had become the regime's official policy. As a result, the services of all Baha'i doctors, nurses, teachers, and other professionals were terminated. In almost every case, the verdicts issued to these Baha'is stated that only if the dismissed person recanted the Baha'i faith and converted to Islam could they return to work. Another blow against the Baha'i community came in 1984, when clerics and Islamic courts announced that the payment of salaries to dismissed Baha'i employees was and always had been illegal. As a result, it was mandated that any payment ever made to a Baha'i must be returned. Baha'is were thus summoned to return all the wages and salaries that they had ever earned. And since most were unable to pay back the money, they were imprisoned. Mujahidin 
Compared to Baha'is employed by the government, Baha'i farmers and villagers faced even more severe circumstances. Farmers whose families had worked for generations after generations on their lands and were earning for their livelihood suddenly lost everything by the order of certain clerics and Friday prayer leaders. During Ahmadinejad's presidency, the persecution of the Baha'is in Iran increased unprecedentedly in intensity and scope, and this abuse still continues today. Baha'is are denied their right to work even in the private sector. They are randomly questioned, arrested and detained. Their homes and businesses are invaded, and their shops and offices forcibly closed. Legal ownership of inherited properties of Baha'is was another measure used by the government of Iran to exert economic pressure on the Baha'i community. Influential clerics who were hostile towards the Baha'is took steps to deprive them of their rightful inheritance. If there was a Muslim relative in the family of a deceased Baha'i, the entire inheritance would be allocated to that person, regardless of the relationship. In cases where there was not a Muslim relative, the assets would be seized and ownership transferred to newly created foundations. In 2008, new economic pressures began in Semnan with the arrest of some members of the Baha'i community and the sealing off of their business premises. These attacks were subsequently extended to other cities such as Hamadan, Tonekabon, Rafsanjan, Sori, Gayan Shar, Baba, Bandare Torkaman, Mohtelgu, Giroft, and Kerman. Semnan served as a pilot to explore a strategy to economic persecution that could be executed on the Baha'is in other parts of the country. According to Semnan's Friday prayer leader, if we can expel Baha'is from Semnan, we will be able to expel all the Baha'is of Iran. The ultimate intent of this process seemed to be to oppress the Baha'is to the point that they would have no choice but to leave their homeland. Currently, in Semnan, all Baha'i business premises, factories, shops, orchards and agricultural lands are prohibited from engaging in any business. Today, Baha'is who used to be factory managers, farmers, businessmen and successful industrialists, who had previously received the accolades of higher government authorities and even had received letters of appreciation from the Islamic Republic ministries, can hardly survive financially and have resorted to in-house occupations, peacefully refusing to allow this unjust oppression by the authorities to drive them from their native country. In 2014, Another strategy was used to seal off the premises of Baha'i businesses on the pretext that the owners had disobeyed the regime by closing their shops to observe a Baha'i holy day. The rationale for these accusations is based on the fact that there are nine days in a year on which Baha'is could choose to suspend work. However, according to trade union regulations in Iran, anyone holding a business license is allowed to close his business for up to 15 consecutive days for any reason. Regardless of this, the nine Baha'i holy days in question are scattered throughout the year, some of which may even fall on Iran's official public holidays. The Public Places Supervision Office considers the closing of Baha'i business premises on Baha'i holy days to be a disturbance to the foundation of Iran's Islamic Republic and a cause of disruption to public opinion. In addition to the closure of Baha'i businesses in Semnan and Rafsanjan, a great number of businesses have also been forcibly closed in Hamadan, Kerman, and Tonekabon. Simultaneously, in cities such as Sari, Goyamshar, Babal, Babalsar, Motelhu, and Nur, the strategy of financial suffocation of Baha'is is being pursued through the temporary and occasional shutting down of shops and the expulsion of music teachers and art students from private practice. For many years, in defense of the rights of its fellow Baha'is of Iran, 
the Baha'i international community has reached out to human rights organizations, requesting help to defend the rights of the oppressed Baha'is of Iran. The officials of the Iranian government claim that these legal defenses are plots against Iran by Israel, the United States, and the United Kingdom, and denounce the Baha'is as subjects and spies of these countries. Not a day goes by without the appearance of these baseless lies and insinuations in Iran state's official media. In response to the appeal from international communities for Iran to uphold the rights of its Baha'i citizens, Mr. Javad Larijani, Iran's representative to the Human Rights Organization, has claimed otherwise. <laughs> Two key questions arise here. Who are the Baha'is? And how long must thousands of Iranian people be exposed to violence and suppression because of their devotion to this religion? The answer to the first question is that regardless of their belief, Baha'is are people of Iran. These Baha'is are Iranian, and Iran's prosperity is the dearest wish of each and every one of them. Kindness and sincerity are at the heart of the teachings they follow, and they are obligated to treat every nation and race with these qualities so that a civilization based on peace and tranquility can be established throughout the world and all humanity can enjoy material and spiritual well-being. In regard to the second question, violence, persecution and injustice against Baha'is will end when the noble people of Iran support more than ever before the rights of Baha'is and other minorities and defend the rights of all citizens as they pursue a path towards democracy. Questions such as the following must be thought about deeply by every Iranian. Why have my fellow countrymen, people from my town, my neighbors and friends, been persecuted for years because of their beliefs? Why are their children deprived of higher education in universities? Why are Baha'is deprived of their right to work in many professions while being asked to carry out the compulsory military service and pay taxes? Why are the families of Baha'is who sacrificed their lives for their country, veterans and captives during the war with Iraq, now deprived of the privileges that others in that same position enjoy? Why has the shop of this man been closed? A man who suffered chemical exposure while fighting for his country in the war. It is questions like these that can inspire a passion and fervor for seeking justice in the heart of every Iranian, whether an ordinary citizen from the general public or a high-ranking statesman. Only by eliminating these prejudices will we be able to focus on the development and progress of our precious country, regardless of any religion or belief, and work together towards a free and more prosperous Iran, thus bringing to life the withered tree of our homeland. ایران خانه خوبان شمان رنج دوران 
برده ای رنج دوران برده ای ما برای آنچه ایران گوهری تابان شود خون دلها خورده ایم خون دلها خورده ایم ما برای خواندن این قصه عشق بخواد رنج دوران برده ایم رنج دوران برده ایم ما برای جاودان ماندن این عشق خود خون دلها خورده ایم خون دلها خورده ایم لا 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 La 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 la